So for this unit, we're going to be discussing the origins of Art Nouveau, and we're starting with the French origins of Art Nouveau. And contrasting to the 19th century, where people were seeing the industrial world around them as kind of being uglier or not as nice and maybe trying to beautify it, they were emulating older styles such as the Gothic architecture. But now what's really cool is that the French Rococo style is coming back, but it's not coming back in the sense that they were trying to look to the past and emulate that exactly because they were dissatisfied, they were trying to create their own style standard and they were trying to create something that was influenced by the features of the Rococo style but updated and modern and something that was very unique to the current time periods of the late 19th century. So this image here is by Francois Boucher. It's called The Rising of the Sun from 1753. And what you're seeing a lot in this image is a lot of swirling bright colors. You're seeing sensuality. You're seeing people at home. And it's very enlightened very kinetic energy that you're seeing in this painting. So this is something that the modern graphic designers from the French Art Nouveau period are trying to look towards. These are the features that they're trying to copy when they're creating this new style. So as you can also see, the figures are soft, it's very lighthearted. There's even a sense of domesticity. Other features of the Rococo style are that you're going to see a lot of courting, a lot of beauty, romance, aristocratic people in fancier clothing, lots of playfulness, lots of sexuality. People were much more animated, if you will, but much more alive. These poses are definitely sort of like a photograph, like a scene caught in the moment of time. And another theme of the Rococo style was that there was a lot of mythology, as well as pastel colors, but also definitely that vibrancy and there's a lot of different shades, tonal shades, and a lot of balance with composition, which is definitely in contrast to the 19th century Victorian graphic design where they would put a lot of words stacked together, kind of juxtaposed next to the pictures. There was often no chance to breathe within the image. And of course you cannot forget all the male shrubs that were around the paintings. They had wings and they were a little bit chubby and these nude figures, these male nudes that were also adorning these images. So here we have the artist Jules Chiray and this image is called La Loie Foulée. It is made in 1893. And he is another one of the artists that was really trying to push for using chromolithography as an art form. And he thought that it was a great way to get such vibrant and different saturated and separated colors in his artwork. So this is at the end of the Franco-Prussian War of 1870. So the French were really trying to um, revive themselves artistically after the decline in productivity, the decline in industry. This was sort of their way of creating a style standard and creating a culture. And if you notice the similarities, this is definitely inspired but however obviously modernized by the Rococo imagery. You still have that sexuality, that confidence, that feminine energy in this piece of artwork in this poster and this is for a performer and this is a ballet that was taking place at the Folies Berger and this is the dancer and her entertainment style also was reflected by the ideals of the time period. She had a lot of stage lighting that also created this brightness, these pastels, and these colors. You could almost say that he reimagined or re-engineered the Rococo style with images such as this. So at the time period this was very shocking and very daring. And this is one feature of Art Nouveau, this is the side of the Rococo style, and this is what people are a lot more familiar with. However, it is true that when we are discussing this time period, we're not only referring to images that look like this, that look characteristic of the Art Nouveau, we're looking at everything that was happening during that time period. We're talking about this whole movement um, that was taking place as a whole. Which brings us to the next image, which was also done by the same artist. And this one takes its inspiration from the Japanese prints called Ukiyo-e, which were made from woodblocks. 
And what's interesting about this image is that you will see that the dancers are intertwined with the text. So instead of trying to section off and justify the text and make it align perfectly, it's definitely incorporated within the movement of this image. You see the dancer below, and this was definitely something new for the time that her body is intertwined with the lettering. The font perfectly complements the image. They're very cohesive together. They're moving as a whole. And while you could say that there is definitely a lettering style, this was not a pre-made font. The lettering was actually created specifically to this chromolithographic print, and this was the two-dimensional style that he chose. You can see that the image is outlined, and it definitely provides an overall sense of joyousness, of happiness, and basically just this exuberance that was reflective of the performance itself. So this poster, you might have seen it before, is by Leonardo Capiello, and he is an Italian designer who actually had no formal training in art, but he became a caricature artist, and he was hugely innovative in that he was able to have these characters with an action very iconic image juxtaposed on a black background and this was an early form of an advertising technique where the name of the product would be directly associated with the image that you see so you would see that image and you would think about the product that it's trying to advertise and he did a lot of posters for aperitifs different liqueurs stuff like that Capiello was an expatriate who moved to Paris from Italy in 1898 and he was one of the young artists who was blossoming and he was featured in the publication Le Rire and that is what kick-started his career and he went on to become very lucrative in the design and he also was combining this Japonese style so the very sensual Japanese exotic imagery almost had a pinup quality to them and this image is almost a mockery of the pinup women that were used to sell similar products of the time so instead you have this devilish figure who's contrasting the typical fairies that we're seeing the women who are seductive and posing in these beautiful positions so this we have this creature that is sort of mocking that um, hypersexuality and advertising that we were already seeing at this point. So this is to me reminiscent of the green fairy that you see in the absinthe ads, you know, the typical Art Nouveau style that we think of when we think about the genre itself. And here is another image that he did similarly. It's a cognac ad. Uh, just another example of the type of work that he did. And these just very stark images. They're dramatic. They've got the black background. They've got the same color. They are still seeming like they have a little bit of that inspiration from the Rococo style. Well, specifically uh, what Chiray turned the Rococo style into. So it's a combination of that plus the Japanese style. There's a lot of Japanese influence from their their woodcuts when they were featured in these exhibitions in Paris. And of course, these images are a little bit strange, but keep in mind that they are meant to be caricatures. They are meant to be sardonic, a little bit satirical. One of the more renowned artists of this movement was Alphonse Mucha from 1860 to 1939 and he was an also another expatriate from Czechoslovakia and his big break was when he had to design a movie poster for Sarah Bernhardt so the center image is that poster that he made he was um, working at a uh, print shop in France and the title role of the performance was Gizmonda, and this was the image that became very iconic for the way her beautiful red hair was depicted, and the actress loved this image so much that she went on to ask Muka to design her sets, her jewelry, and other promotional materials. What is unique to his style is a sort of curvilinear 
rhythm. So there is a lot of contour, a lot of build up in the hair. Um, he actually went on to design the style of hair that kind of flows around the image and circles around called Le Style, Le style Muka, which was basically his style and it went along with the text that he also drew in these images that seemed to complement the artwork very well. Another thing that was very characteristic was that these little uh, decorations here and here and here, uh, all this negative space that was filled with these flowing lines, that was also what contributed to the curvilinear part. And these motifs that he used in his work, um, like over here, these were also very characteristic um, of the style. And also these patterns that were repetitive were known as arabesques. These were not like too similar to the ones that you see in the Arab artwork, but they are also called arabesques. So this um, image right here is called Beer de la Muse, and this is an advertisement for beer. And you can see it's already very glamorized, very sexualized, and it almost gives the viewer the idea that if you're drinking this product, that you too will be able to attract these beautiful women that are modeling the product and in this very sensual feminine pose. So this is just giving the idea that there's an association with this gorgeous, very ephemeral young woman and the beer that the advertiser is trying to sell. What is also cool about the image is that there in her hair you see the barley and then you see the crops of the hops and these motifs are floral and feminine but they're also echoing uh, the components of the product, the components of the beer. So it's also important to note that uh, with the style of Art Nouveau, they weren't just hoping to create posters, they were hoping to create a style that would translate into everything, such as the metropolitan entrance, such as clothing, such as jewelry, such as architecture. So this was a style that was going to define the period as a whole, not just something that you saw in actual graphic works. So this is Le Chat Noir. This is an advertisement for a French cabaret. And the artist is Theophile Steinlin. So the Black Cat was a cabaret in Paris in the Bohemian District. And um, this is one of the first modern cabarets. This is a nightclub where people would come in and sit down and watch the shows on stage and have some alcoholic beverages. And in this image you can definitely see the Japanese influence. You have the outlines, you have the two-dimensional print quality to it. You have the simple basic colors. I'm taking the eliteness um, of the Japanese inspired prints where they would feature beautiful ideals of women who were entertainers. So they were hoping that this sexualized imagery from Japan would influence the nature of the nightlife that was coming around as a new form of entertainment that would later be defined um, in the 1890s, um, it would become something much more common. So this image was actually a commission done um, by Le Chat Noir, the actual nightclub, and um, this was sort of introduced to um, Theophile by his friend Adolphe Ouellette, who took him to meet the crowd at this nightclub, and the rest was history. And of course in this image we see sort of an idealistic society. This is kind of um, one of those things, this is called La Rue, that was hoping to kind of inspire people from the visual art to live a sort of lifestyle that is reflected in this image. So very similar to William Morris who sort of wanted to beautify the world, we have this image that's sort of hoping to make an impact in society and kind of beautify what was happening on the streets. So this was all about improving things for the working class. Uh, however, that this image was not successful in doing so, but it was a nice gesture and sort of reminds you of uh, what was happening in the arts and crafts movement.